two, one. Hey guys, welcome to the first episode of the Irenic Protestant podcast. Uh, we're so excited uh, to get going with this. We've been talking about making this podcast uh, for, for a few months now, so we're excited to finally uh, get it going. Uh, so for this intro video, to kind of like, kind of let you know where we're going, uh, we're going to each kind of introduce ourselves today. Um, we all come from a different branch of the Protestant tradition. Um, we're all confessional and classical Protestants, um, and we're all really excited about it. Um, we're also all college students. Um, we're all uh, studying uh, theology or uh, religion, uh, getting geared up to head off to seminary eventually. Um, so uh, just, a, just a quick capture about what we're all about here at the Irenic Protestant Podcast is uh, we're here to um, discuss and eat up and talk about issues pertaining to classical Protestantism uh, with the uh, goal and end goal uh, of a recovery of the classical confessional Protestant tradition. Um, so I'm going to give it off to the Twitter famous Matthew Pearson to introduce himself. Hey, what's up, y'all? Uh, as you heard from him, my name is Matthew Pearson. And uh, as he also said, uh, you know, I, I don't let the fame get to me. It's 2,000 followers. That's, that's nothing compared to most Twitter people, I guess. Maybe on Christian Twitter, though. But yeah, my name is Matthew Pearson, and you can find me on Twitter at underscore Matthew Pearson. Uh, M-A-T-T-H-E-W-P-E-A-R-S-O-N. And uh, I'm a part of the, uh, the Presbyterian tradition, uh, specifically PCA. And I actually pulled it up because I forgot the name of my presbytery. But if you want to know my presbytery to contact my uh, authorities in case I'm a bad, guy, a bad fellow online, uh, I'm part of the Southwest Florida Presbytery and I go to Christ Central Presbyterian Church. And uh, yeah, and I guess since this is the intro episode, we're supposed to tell us, uh, you know, share, spill some beans about it, uh, ourselves. Is that right? That's correct. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So yeah, like I said, I'm a Presbyterian. I grew up in a Southern Baptist family, specifically uh, went to a very large mega church and, you know, uh, it was great. I learned about Jesus and all that. And, you know, there are some areas where it, I, you know, there are things that were iffy, but eventually I, um, through a little bit of study, I ended up becoming uh began to affirm uh pedo baptism and that led me in between a rock and a hard place that rock being presbyterianism and that hard place being lutheranism and so after going back and forth for a while eventually because of uh the eucharistic theology i ended up sticking with the reformed tradition and i stayed at the presbyterian church i began attending and yeah it's been great uh anything specifically about me that if you follow me on twitter you may know but i very much am interested in um this lovely italian man with a great beard um his name is peter martyr vermigli uh, i very much enjoy uh reading his writings funny enough the reason why i like him a lot actually is because i had no clue i'm my mother is italian and i had no clue there were any italians who existed in the universe that were protestant back then and turns out there are quite a few. There's Turretin, Zanchi, Vermigli. But Vermigli, he, he caught my eye. So I always kind of stuck with him, really uh, enjoyed reading his writings. And I also am interested a lot in uh, sacramental theology. So, yeah, uh, I can keep going, but I've been going on for a little over two minutes. So, yeah. Well, Matthew, can you, can you tell us where, you, where, where you're going to school and what you're studying currently? Uh, yeah, good thing. Thanks for reminding me of that. I currently go to, um, I'm the only one of these fellows who not, who's not going to Bible college at the moment. I'm at the University of South Florida, and I'm majoring in religious studies, and I'm minoring in philosophy. Really enjoy the philosophy stuff. The religion stuff, not going to lie, it can be kind of booty sometimes. It's very much like, it's like, how is this uh, culture imposing on this culture's beliefs? Because they're really, like, shut up, you know, it's kind of like that stuff. But um, some of the classes are cool. There's like, it's really funny because since it's like, since it's um, a secular university, the ways in which you evaluate how base somebody is, by the way, I'm only saying base because I know it's going to make Jordan upset. But the, the way you evaluate whether someone's based or not is like whether they like Tim Keller. And like, I have a teacher who loves Tim Keller. And I'm like, you know, in a normal setting, I might be like, oh, okay, you know, Tim Keller, whatever. But in a secular setting, I'm just like, this guy likes Tim Keller. Wow, this guy must be the best person in the world here. So yeah, That's sorry awesome. about my tangents. I might go on some. I might go on tangents a little bit <laughs> on this podcast, but hopefully, y'all enjoy. We're we're, we're going to enjoy it quite a bit. Um, Jordan, great. would you would you tell us a bit about yourself? Who the heck are you? Yeah, I'm uh, Jordan. I uh, go to a Reformed Baptist church, and that's kind of where I 
lean theologically as well and uh, hold to the second London Baptist confession. Um, I did not grow up Southern Baptist. Uh, I grew up an unbeliever for most of my life, like an atheist. And then I converted when I was around 18. And, um, and I've been a Baptist uh, since, I'm 23 now. And um, one of the uh, theologians that I've come to love um, has been uh, John Owen. And I, I, although I am a Baptist, I do not think that John Owen was a Baptist, uh, nor was ever going to be a Baptist. <laughs> Just want to throw that out there. But uh, so on top of that, I think, uh, I think John Owen is, um, the reason I love him so much is I think he blends the theological and practical uh, in theology um, pretty well. Uh, he has a, a great uh, Christological um, studies and, and his book on, on the glory of Christ is, is brilliant. Um, and even, but his meditations also on, on, uh, on Christ is, is just, as, just as great. And so he could reach the, the tops of, of theological um, technicality, but also reach the depths of, of a good practicality as well. And so on top of that, I, uh, I also have an interest in like Protestant uh, ecumenism and uh, Iranicism and just visible unity with, uh, within Protestantism. And so, um, you know, I, I have a somewhat eclectic library of, of so many different denominations and, and um, groups of believers. Uh, so yeah, I mean, that's, that's generally, generally what I am interested in, so. Real Something. quick before we move on, um, not all of us watch Gavin Ortland's YouTube channel. So can one of us define what Arenic means? Because we're called the Arenic Protestants. Josh, could you define Irenicism for us? Uh, <clears throat> yeah, Irenic. Uh, I couldn't. I couldn't give you an an Oxford Dictionary definition, but just this is an example of what it means to be Irenic. For there to be, although our theological differences, for example, Jordan's view of baptism and my view of pedo baptism, although there's theological differences, we're going to unite with one hand and one voice and acknowledge that we are all part of the visible church of Jesus Christ. And despite our theological differences, we're going to work uh, to maintain um, unity between uh all, most of the Protestant um, mm -hmm. denominations or yeah. branches of Protestantism. So yeah, I guess we we are an example of what it means to be ironic. Uh, I guess yeah, I guess that's my example. Yeah. So I actually I pulled the term ironic Protestant um, from from Stephen Wedgworth on on Twitter. I heard him using the term. I you know um, and him describe himself in that way. I, I found it compelling, uh, and I think you you see this this trend in in Protestantism of guys that are a bit more eclectic um, and, will, and being able to appropriate from across the classical Protestant tradition where they where they see that it's useful. Um, I think you get a lot of this from like the Davenant Institute and, and guys like that, which are my heroes, which I see as like peak ironic Protestants. I mean, the Davenant Institute's made up of Presbyterians, Baptists, Anglicans, and, um, and amidst their disagreements, they're working together to recover classical Protestant wisdom and theology. Um, and so that's kind of where I got the term from. And I thought it was an apt term to describe us for and what our goal is here. Um, I'll introduce myself now too. Uh, I'm Jonathan McKenzie. I am, I'm the host of uh, this Ironic Protestant podcast. Uh, I am the resident um, Anglican of the podcast. Uh, I say Anglican in a weird way because uh, the simple fact is uh, I've only ever been a part of an Anglican church for months. Um, since leaving the home growing up in a, in a Baptist world, I don't very much like um, reformed-ish Baptist world, um, I kind of read my way into the Anglican tradition uh, uh, by the end of uh, college, um, really prayed my way in using the 1662 book Common Prayer and um, still, still pray it quite often. Um, and so uh, actually, I currently attend a, a Presbyterian church, a very high church yes. Presbyterian church here in uh, in Orlando in the PCA. Um, it's uh, St. Paul's Presbyterian. So if you ever need to comment, contact my session with issues about me, I'll let them know. Um, I do hope on eventually joining uh, a solid Anglican congregation uh, at, at some point, but just uh, in the Orlando area, that's a, it's a bit harder than you might think. Um, 
there's uh there's you know, there's there's some good faithful uh, episcopal ministers in the area but just my own convictions with like women's ordination those sorts of things i i i make a better fit in the central florida uh presbytery of the pca right now um I, I attend Reformation Bible College where I'm studying uh, Christian thought for my undergrad. Um, and my uh, particular theological interests are less in uh, one, uh, you know, uh, one individual, but really in um, uh, a few topics. But the main one for me is uh, liturgy and prayer book studies. I spend my time thinking about what happens in the Sunday morning worship service and the best way to go about doing that thing. I'm fixated on the liturgy and the dance that takes place, uh, not just because it's like a really cool, beautiful dance, because this dance and in, in it we participate in the heavenly reality and in, in, in what God's doing in the world. And it's the means by which God is recreating the world and equipping his people and going to war against the world, the flesh and the devil. So I get really excited about it. So I spend uh, a lot of my time studying um, the prayer book uh, and the various prayer books. Um, I'm a prayer book nerd and that's what I, that's what I care about. Um, and the other area of um, interest for me uh, in general is uh, sacramentology, um, specifically um, just the reappropriation of it in Protestantism. You know, I, I study it so much that uh, I, I sometimes just don't know where I'm at because I just, I just love reading it from a collective perspective. Um, the last thing I'd say about myself that might be of interest to this podcast is out of the four of us, I'm the, I'm the least specialized. Uh, I, I tend to be a bit more eclectic when I read and what I study and what I what I care about. Um, and so that is why I am the host. Uh, I think I'm better uh, oriented towards asking these really guys that are specialized in their one area questions about that one area because I'm curious about it. Um, I think that's all to say about me. Uh, Josh, would you introduce your beautiful self to the audience? Sure. Um, my name is Joshua Janier. I'm from New York City originally, um, and moved down to Sanford, Florida to attend college with uh, these great brothers, Jordan and uh, Jonathan, at Reformation Bible College. Um, I'm currently in the um, Biblical Studies program, Accelerated Track. Um, that is, I'm scheduled to graduate in two and a half years and hopefully go to a, a respected seminary that's connected with the school. I am a teaching um intern in the URCNA, so I'm Dutch Reformed, um, hold to the three forms of unity. Um, and my particular interests are just reform scholasticism in general, um, and just in particular is just specific Dutch scholastics in the 17th century, um, and the response to the Enlightenment, guys like Baruch Spinoza and Rene Descartes, there's a lot of reform literature against uh, the Enlightenment philosophers, but particularly one of my favorite interests are just the necessity and just the reforms treatment um, of their prolegomena. Uh, prolegomena to the reform was seen as necessary and their treatment, their prolegomena really sets up for their whole system and it's integral to what it means to be reformed. So those are my interests, uh, just Dutch reform scholasticism in general, and I guess a little bit of modern philosophy. Awesome, man. Dude, we're so excited to have all three of you guys. Uh, I forgot to say two things I wanted to add to my to my intro, if I, if I may. Uh, I wanted to say that when I'm Anglican, I'm referring to a uh, subscription to the uh, Third and Articles of Religion in the 1662 prayer book in the Book of Homilies, not some weird Anglo-Catholic, you know, weird, 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 weirdy stuff or, you know, modern evangelicals. I'm deep in the stream of confessional classical Anglican theology. Um, that's the only thing I also had to add. Um, so then also just to give you the audience kind of a view about what a standard episode is going to look like uh, for the Ironic Protestant podcast. Um, uh, basically, the way we're going to do this is kind of a, a seminar style podcast. So each week we're going to have one of our one of our uh, panelists here on the podcast. Um, they're going to prepare. We're going to they're, they're going to prepare um, a topic of discussion. Uh, so say, uh, just for example, uh, next week, uh, Josh is going to, sorry, the next, the next episode, which is going to be in uh, two weeks from this release date, uh, Josh is going to be um, discussing uh, Protestant prolegomena and why it's necessary. So he's going to uh, give it a, uh, uh, we'll give an intro and kind of catch up real quick and ask a question of the week just to get us going. And then jo uh, Josh will present uh, 15 or 20 minutes on his topic on why we need to recover Protestant um 
prolegomena and why why that's important. And then we'll take the next um, we'll take the next uh, 15 minutes or so, just kind of questioning him, discussing that topic. You know, 15 to 20 minutes discussing that topic, pressing him and asking questions that we think are necessary, and kind of have a seminar style discussion. We'll prepare beforehand to kind of be ready to ask questions regarding that, uh, and then we'll just we'll just wrap up. Um, so we're looking to discover. Um, uh, and, and talk about topics just relating to classical Protestantism in general, whether it be a Vermiglis Eucharistic theology or Owen's Doctrine of the Atonement, or uh, discussing some Anglo Catholic understandings of the Eucharistic sacrifice. Like, we're ready to go and we're ready to discuss those topics. Um, hey, Josh, would you be willing to give us a quick sales pitch for why we want to come back for the next episode to hear you talk about why we need prolegomena? Yeah, I can do that. Um... Prolegomen is a big word, um, and when we see big words that we don't understand, we tend to not, you know, want to go back. If, you know, if I was in your position and I said, why prolegomena? First of all, I don't even know what that word means, so why should I come back and watch? So prolegomena just means things said prior, and any proper science has a prolegomena. Um, things need to be said prior before you treat um, the existence of your subject matter, and of obviously our subject matter is God, and the science is theology. Um, but prolegomena is, is necessary because it allows you to do theology in a way that honors and glorifies God. Um, it allows you to do theology as a Christian. Um, it, it prepares you to treat each theological locus, such as the doctrine of God, the doctrine of Christ, sacramentology, and do so in such a way that, you know, you do not err, right? You know, something that is said a lot in our in Reformed prolegomena is that the finite cannot comprehend the infinite. So, for example, let's say we're treating the doctrine of God. And obviously the Trinity is one of, you know, one of the divine mysteries of the Christian faith. And let's say you treat the Trinity in a rationalistic way. You're not doing theology um, in a way that honors the Lord, as Deuteronomy 29 says, you know, the secret things belong to the Lord, but that which we, that has been revealed belongs to us and to our children. So we want to maintain those distinctions between the knowledge that God has of himself, absolutely, as, you know, the one true and living God, and the knowledge that we have as weak creatures, finite, um, we think discursively, we're not, we're not God. So prolegomena allows you to do theology in a Christian way. Um, it's integral, you know, reform, you know, prolegomena was seen as integral to the reforms system. Um, and those who are reformed and those who are not reformed, it should be, it should be integral to, you know, if, especially if you have desire of theological ministry or just desire to um, teach your kids how to think about God, you want to start with a good prolegomena. You want to make sure that you have a good foundation um, before, right? Uh, what does prolegomena mean? Things said prior. You want to make sure the things that you said prior are right so that we're not building theology on impious foundations. You know, you know, Jordan mentioned how John Owen is a, a great example of what it means to treat theology and honor the theoretical and also know that it organically leads to the practical. Um, when we build, when we do theology with impious foundations, it will not lead to doxology. And that's why prolegomena is necessary, establishing the nature of theology as it is knowledge, but it is knowledge that is meant to lead the Christian to glorify his God. Mm. Dude, so we're, we're all looking forward to hearing you talk more about that uh, next time. Uh, so thank you all so much for uh, joining us for our inaugural episode of the Ironics, Ironic Protestant Podcast. Looking forward to seeing you all next time. And we're out.